Today on Rest Spirits and Gear, I show you how to make your MIDI drums pop. November is, of course, Metal Month in the land of Tune Track, and to celebrate, we're going to go over some things mm, Tune Track related every week this month, and it's going to be lots of learning and lots of riffage and lots of lots of metal. We're going to bring on the metal for November, and this week I'm going to show you how to make your MIDI drums pop using Easy Drummer and some external processing built into the DAW. Super simple. I'm just going to show you some some tips to really make your drums come to life. So first, here's my DAW. This is Logic Pro 10. I have Easy Drummer loaded. And you just heard it on the song that you just heard and just saw. I'm running Easy Drummer 2. Now, this is the kit that I use for 99% of my videos and my music. This is where I start. Sometimes I'll tweak it depending on the song, what I'm looking for, but almost 100% of the time I start with this kit. This is the Easy Drummer 2 Modern Kit, and I'm using all of the stock cymbals. Okay. I thought the cymbals sounded good on their own and they didn't need, you know, I didn't need to change them out. I didn't feel like I was lacking anything in the cymbal department. So let's go on to the snare. <clears throat> For the snare, I'm using the Metal Machine uh, Danette Titanium snare. And we're gonna get to the processing here in a second, but I'm just gonna go over the base kit. Um, this is from Metal Machine, the Metal Machine Expansion Pack. Now for the toms, I'm using two different models. For the upper toms, for the rack toms, I'm using the Metal Pack. And I'm using the All Around Tom 1 and All Around Tom 2 for the rack toms. I'm a huge fan of the Mastodon record, The Hunter, and I really love the drum tone on that album. And it's kind of a 70s, but it's like a modern vintage kind of a thing. And I kind of wanted to emulate that with a lot of attack and a lot of high end in the toms. I really, really like that because it also gives you a lot of cut in the mix. Now for the floor toms, I'm also using the metal pack, but I'm using the uh, Reverbathon uh, Tom 3 and the Reverbathon Tom 4. Uh, the reason why I did that is because there's only so uh, so many Tom 4s uh, in the kits. And with the amount of low end that the low toms generate, I wanted something that would cut a little bit more. There's a lot of high end in the floor toms and I like that. And with the kick drum, lastly, it's the metal kit. It's the uh, ring smack kit. And um, it's pretty straightforward. This is a very loud kick drum and I turn the volume down. And uh, that's about it. Oh, and I've pitched it down just a little bit. And uh, other than that, that's all I'm doing within Easy Drummer 2. Now for the mixer, I have the reverb just past 50%. I have the, the compression just past 50%. And I have the mic bleed and the overheads and the ambiences up all the way. Um, again, you can download this kit in the description below. You can also download this template follow along if you'd like. 
So let's get to the uh, let's get to the external processing, shall we? So first, from left to right, I have my kick, I have my snare, I have my hi hats, my toms, my overheads, and my uh, my ambient mics, my room mics, basically. Now for the kick, I'm gonna turn off the EQ. I'm gonna turn off the EQs and the posts. And I have some things bust. And we're just gonna mute everything. So we need to hear just the kit. And here's what the kit sounds like right now. Okay, it's pretty dry. That's intentional. Um, this kit is a really, really good kit to really build sounds upon. So first, with the kick drum, I'm gonna carve out some frequencies and I'm gonna boost a little bit of the low end. So I'm gonna A, B it for you. You may not be able to hear much of a difference, but stay with me because you will. Next on the snare, we have some pretty hefty EQ. It's pretty, it's a pretty healthy amount. With the snare in particular, I was looking for a real good low end voicing and shape. Um, I like adding a lot of high end, some decent high end to a snare if it has the body that I'm looking for as opposed to vice versa because I have found that trying to add body to a snare that doesn't have body, especially with MIDI drums, um, you, uh, that's an uphill battle, and then you, it doesn't sit well, and, and it's just, it's not, uh, it's not conducive to time, to proper time management. So, I look for a snare that has good body, and then I add the high end in. So here's what the snare sounds like currently. Now for the toms, I added a little bit of a low cut. And this is to all of them. This is the tom bus. This isn't individual toms. I am also compressing them. Um, I'm compressing them fairly lightly. Um, I'm just using this as a, a built-in compressor with Logic. Um, just, just to even them out. Um, what this does is, uh, no matter if you're, what, no matter what the velocity is, you're still going to get a pretty even sound and cut in the mix, and it's going to be across the board. It's going to be more or less the same volume. Um, it's just it's to help me out, um, as opposed to really, really getting uh, fine tuning with the velocities in the MIDI. So currently, the drum kit sounds like this. Okay, so now we're going to use some parallel compression. Now on the kick drum, I've got bus to my easy comp, and this is um, this is set to post pan. So this is after panning and after the fader. Um, I have 100% sent to the compression bus. Um, I also have the compression. Uh, I have the snare being sent to the compression bus as well. It's my bus too. And I also have the overheads being bussed a little bit to the compression bus um, just for evenness and cohesiveness between the different instruments. I know this is mini drums, but the samples are very, very good. And because I'm using different samples from different kits that were done at different times, cohesiveness is pretty important. So now with the compression bus, my easy comp, 
So currently I have everything, the entire kit, going to my main bus. And then I have some, uh, I have the, uh, the kick, the snare, and the toms bust to my compression bus. And I also have a reverb bus, and all three of these buses are going into my main drum bus. And this is just so I can turn everything down and have everything remain the same, still hitting the compressors the same. And, uh, but we're not to the reverb yet, but here's what it sounds like with parallel compression. I, the compressor, the, the compressor is doing a, a lot of work mainly with the kick because the kick is hitting it pretty hard. Um, but that's okay. That's, that's what we want. Now on the reverb, I have, I'm using a stock logic reverb. This is just, uh, this is just the AU matrix reverb that comes stock. It's from Apple. And I have a medium chamber dialed in and I am sending, uh, the snare the toms and the overheads. I'm sending a little bit of the overheads in for that cohesiveness I was talking about earlier. So we're going to open up everything and I'm gonna slowly add in the uh, reverb. See how the reverb really fills out and really gets the kit sounding huge and wide and big and that's exactly what we want because if we didn't do any of that stuff in the mix it's going to sound very very small and we don't want that or at least i don't want that some situations it would be cool in for like a real sparse mix you have an acoustic guitar on the left i've mixed stuff like that a uh, real small kit acoustic guitar on the left like a female vocal on the on the right something like that but uh, parallel compression and reverb uh, are the keys to making your MIDI drums sound huge. Again, you can download all the stuff in the description. Take my template, start with it, play around with it, play along with reverbs, and enjoy. You've been wonderful. I have been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.